Hello again YouTube, welcome to part 11 of the ongoing saga of my shovel head. And once again you find me crouched down by the back wheel, which is uh, a continuing theme it would appear. But anyway, when you left me last time, there was an issue with the uh, brake line not fitting the caliper. I wasn't entirely sure what the issue was and the video ended before I'd found out. So, there's quite a lot of updating to uh, give you. So, I checked the new caliper and the old caliper, and both the threads inside were tapered. Now, I then looked online and found that the original fitting on these is 1 8 NPT, National Pipe Thread, which is an American fitting and not one we get in the UK or Europe that I'm aware of, but certainly not in the UK. And I obviously was unaware it was tapered. My fitting on the brake line was parallel, as is you know, the most common way of attaching a brake line here in the UK. So, I didn't really show you the brake line last time. So, I got it from HAL Performance in the UK. This is the, uh, the replacement, which we'll get to in one second. Now, at four o'clock in the afternoon, I rang a gentleman called Sean at Hell and explained to him the problems I was having with the brake pipe. Because he appears to know brake pipes and braking systems inside out, he immediately knew what the problem was and said I needed an adapter, like so, to fit into my caliper. And in another brake line, uh, with a female end this time, to then go on to the adapter, which would provide me with the correct fittings for the line. Now, that was at four o'clock in the afternoon. I put the phone down. Nine o'clock the following morning, but maybe twenty past nine the following morning. Knock, 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 postman at the door, hands over it, that box I just showed you, and inside was another brake line with all the bits on, so in however many hours that is, considerably less than 24 hours anyway, they had identified the problem, they'd made a new brake line, they'd packaged it, boxed it, got it in the post, and it was delivered to me first class mail the following morning, which is absolutely brilliant service. Um, uh, brilliant service, so thank you very much, Hal Performance. So on to the line itself. It's very well made. It appears to be stainless. I think it's stainless. I should have checked before I started this, but anyway, I'm pretty certain it's stainless. Braided with a clear plastic sleeve over the braiding. Lovely. A lovely piece of kit. Now, I have got no connection to hell. It's the first time I've ever used them, but I will be using them again because the price was also, I think, exceptionally good. So, anyway. We now have the brake line. Also, since the end of the last video, and again related to braking, I was contacted by a new subscriber, uh, a gentleman from America, whose uh, YouTube names are Y Sammy, who had watched the front brake video and said I was using the wrong brake fluid and I should look at the workshop manual 1972, whenever it is, 80 something, but anyway, 1970 on. Which I had a PDF copy of already. To be honest, I hadn't looked at it very closely. He supplied the page. I went to the page, and he is 100% correct. In the 1970 on manual, it clearly states that you should use DOT5 brake fluid, which is uh, silicon. Synthetic based silicon fluid. Now, I was immediately very confused by this because A, I didn't think silicon fluid was in general circulation at that time anyway. I know the military had used it in the early 70s. Certainly, certainly, I don't think it was as early as 1970, but anyway, I may be wrong. Anyway, I was very, very confused by this because I had, I had read elsewhere in a, a road test, I think it was where they listed the specifications. 
that the 73 had dot 3 fluid. So I was in my usual motor factors who have a telephone helpline for brake inquiries to a large and well-known British manufacturer of brakes who have been making disc brakes since uh, just after the Second World War, whatever the date was, I can't remember, 1960, I don't know. Anyway, that's irrelevant. The point is, they've got a hotline to the technical team so they can just ring them up and find out problems, get them sorted. So I said to them, would you mind just give them a ring and see what they've got down for Harley Davidson? So their uh, information on Harley Davidson, which I assume comes from the manufacturer, given they're a multinational company now, um, said that DOT 5 was only fitted to production bikes from October 1976. I think he said, yeah, I think that's right. And that also ties in with something I then read in um, Donny Peterson's book about the Shovelhead, which is a very good book, by the way, um, which also says sometime in October, I think, 1976, it changed to Dot 5. So clearly, once they started putting Dot 5 into production bikes, they were encouraging people to retrofit Dot 5 to bikes from 1970 on. That doesn't make it wrong, it merely makes it an encouragement because I say they built it with Dot 3. Now, the plan is this I'm going to remove the solid metal brake line again, which you saw fitted to the master cylinder. We're going to remove the brake T-piece and the brake light switch. I'm going to clean them all out so the spot isn't clean. Clean them with alcohol, probably something like that. So the entire back braking line will be new. Seals, caliper, brake lines, everything will be new. And I'm going to fill it with dot five. Because I want to see, A, I want to see how it bleeds up and things, because it's not a brake fluid I'm used to. I have used mineral oil LHM in Citrons for many years. It's much easier to bleed in ordinary brake fluid, so I just want to see where this stuff goes. So that's what's going to happen with the back brakes. The front brakes, I've got DOT4 in, which has a higher boiling point than DOT3, which I believe is the reason Harley probably changed to DOT5 anyway, along with extended service intervals. So I mentioned when I was doing that, that I may change the rubber hose in the future. And now that I know Hell makes such excellent brake lines, that is very much on the agenda. But it won't be till the winter because I want to ride this thing. I want to get it on the road. Lockdown's about to, it would appear, lockdown's about to be eased. I want to get on it and ride it. I want to see if I like it. I just want the Harley experience to find out what everyone talks about. So the front brake is staying as it is with Dot 4 in it. In the winter when it comes off the road, or more to the point, I come off the road to ease my aching bones, um, I will probably fit a new brake line, I'll strip the calipers again, clean it all out, put alcohol through it, make sure it's absolutely spotless, and I'll probably go to Dot 5 on the front as well, as that is Harley's recommendation in the manual for post-70 bikes. Until that point, I'll live with it. I'll take the risk. If DOT3 was okay in 1973 when this came out, the came off the production line, DOT4's got to be okay as well. I'm not, I'm not worried by it, let's put it that way. So that's the plan, and that's what we're going to do. So I will bring you back. I don't think I'll show you me fitting this. There's not really much point. It's simply screwing that end, screwing that end. So when the dot 5 comes through the post, I might show you the bleeding and just see how easy it is, because I don't know. I'm going to, it's a, a voyage of discovery for me as well. So there we go. Interesting stuff. Excellent interaction from people who are watching the videos, which is uh, what I want, because as I say, this is all new to me. I'm learning it day by day. So please, the more you can tell me, the happier I am. Thank you. So let's get on with it. Right, the dot five fluids come. It's American, so it's dyed purple. 
UK stuff, European stuff, isn't necessarily dyed at all. It could be the same straw colour as ordinary brake fluid, which is why I did the uh, brake fluid test earlier on in the video, or previous video. So, I'm just going to fill the reservoir. The bring me around. The bleed nipple is still shut for the minute. Covered, put the paper on and left everything covered because although it doesn't harm paintwork, I really don't want it splashing about and stuff. So I'm going to fill the reservoir and then uh, see how we go. So I'll bring you back then. Right, the reservoir is full. And I've been told, because I say I haven't used silicon before, that uh, if you do everything too quick, it aerates and it's hard to then get the bubbles out. So I'm just going to operate everything very slowly and see if we can get some air back up through the fluid and push it down the line and then we'll go from there to the back end. So let's give it a few pumps and see what happens. Oh yes. Got a nice stream. Nice stream of air coming back up through there. That's taking fluid very well. So, as I suspected, because it's slightly thicker or appears slightly thicker, this might be easier to bleed in standard brake fluid. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's still dropping slowly. Not getting a lot now, though. Right. Okay. <laughs> So, I think we shall turn our attention to the back end and see what we get there. Let's turn you off for a second. Right, the nipple is bigger on this than the old caliper, which is a good thing. It's loose, so I'll just loosen it slightly to see if we can get anything, any feel of anything coming through. No, I can't feel anything at all, it? No, we're obviously nowhere near there yet, so I will continue my slow pumping at the front try and get more fluid down to the back. Right, it's uh, after the initial movement, it's proving a bit reluctant, which might be because it's a brand new piston. Now, I was shown this trick many years ago with brand new pistons that are a bit sticky is uh, to backfill the cavity behind the piston using a pipette or something similar so that you're encouraging the fluid to fill here first. Uh, it will then trap air in the line but you can then bleed out. Um, let's see if that makes any difference. I sincerely hope so because it's going nowhere fast at the minute. Right, it's going to be hard to see this. But now I've backfilled the caliper, we're back to getting air bubbles back through our master cylinder, which had stopped previously. So that is a good sign. It means things are moving again. So a useful little bodge, because as I say, I'd stopped getting air bubbles and I was getting nothing out of the back. So. Hopefully now, now we're starting to slow down again. Hopefully now with a bit of uh, opening and shutting of the nipple, we'll get some fluid. Right, it's taken some time. We now have the vestiges of a pedal. The caliper is moving. And we're starting to get a proper, decent flow of fluid at the back. So hopefully we're nearly there. 
As you can see, the caliper is shifting across very quickly now, so the pads are also moving, pistons moving. Oh, there's plenty of pressure there as well. Right, there are no bubbles in that at all, so I'm going to clean it up. Actually, I'm not going to clean it up, I'm going to leave it to settle for 10 minutes and then try again because we've definitely got brake pad movement calipers moving across you can hear the pads for a short time I'll put some weight on the pedal use a bungee cord or something to give it a bit of pressure and then bleed it again in five ten minutes maybe a bit longer but first I'll clean off the uh, fluid with some brake cleaner get rid of any uh, murky fluid There are no leaps of check. So as I say, I'm going to uh, tie the pedal down with something so there's pressure on it and leave it for a bit. And then tap the lines like I did at the front just to encourage any final movement. The brake's fine. I just left it for a couple of hours, checked it again, the caliper starts to move, the, well, the pads start to move the minute you touch the brake. So I will strap it down overnight just to make sure there's absolutely nothing left in there, but it's functioning properly, it's not pumping up, there are no leaks anywhere, all good. So the final thing to do on the back brakes now is when I was doing the electrics, I forgot to check the rear brake light switch. Now earlier on we checked and it has got a power feed, we know that. Now the brakes have bled. That should light up, which I think you can see it does. So now I have to reconnect that before I forget. And that is the red line. So now I've just got to find out where that red wire goes up top and connect it to the rear brake light circuit. And then we'll have a brake light front and back, which is a good thing. Good. So, silicon brake fluid. Was it any easier to bleed than dot four? No, not really. I was hoping it would be, but I didn't find it so. Uh, so the main advantage then is it it's higher boiling point and it doesn't attract water so you've got long service intervals b between changes if you need to change it at all. Anyway, that's what we've done. So hopefully that's the brakes. So we've got front and rear brakes. I'm just going to sort out that wiring. If all the electrics work, lights work, petrol tanks painted. I think we just need to start refitting things like exhaust. I'm not going to tidy the engine up anymore because I haven't really done it at all um, and get this thing on the road so the final checks will be screen filter gearbox level well, gearbox oil gearbox level engine oil to begin with to get it hot and then I'll change the engine on and I've got another filter for it as well although from memory when I looked the filter in this looked brand spanking new it didn't look like it had been in there more than a few miles Right, onward and upward, I'm going to find this rear brake line electrical connection and sort that out. Right, found it, so ignition on, hopefully we'll now get a brake light. Let's give it a go. There we go, rear brake. Excellent. Okay, so that's the back brake done, everything's working, sorted out, happy. So just before we finish, I wasn't sure how much dot five I was going to need, so if anyone else is doing this job, I ordered 500 mil, 
the bottle wasn't completely filled to the top and that's where the level is now. So if you said it was filled to that shoulder, which it probably was, I would say that's about a quarter of a bottle, that's about half, maybe even slightly less than a quarter of a bottle. So I used about 125 mil. I could have got a 250 mil bottle, uh, which obviously would have been more sensible size, but I don't think from memory it wasn't really that much cheaper anyway. So there you go, that's how much you're likely to need because my, my entire system was empty, completely, bone dry. And that's what it took to fill it and bleed it and get it functioning again. So just I thought it might be useful to know.